over 25 years ago, on September 29th, 1998, we watched a brainy girl with curly hair drop everything to follow a guy she only kind of knew all the way to college. And so began Felicity. My name is Juliette Littman, and I'm a Felicity super fan. Join me, Amanda Foreman, who you may know better as Megan, the roommate, and Greg Grunberg, who you may also know as Sean Blunberg, as the three of us revisit our favorite moments from the show and talk to the people who help shape it. Listen to Dear Felicity on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. You are listening to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Be amazed. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. This is a production from Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. Previously on Robots of the Company. All weapon systems now at maximum capacity. Target lock on the Devil's Tooth Excelsior. Let's blow Captain Lulabell to the other side of the galaxy. Yeah, he's payback time. Nobody makes me swab the decks and lives to tell the tale. Wait! The Devil's Tooth has docked with the Titan too. We can't destroy one without risking serious damage to the other. So? Yeah, so? What's the problem? Good point. Just checking. In that case, let's blast them out of the sky. are listening to Robots of the Company number 507, Insurrection on the Botnik, part 2, written by Vince Staden. What seems to be the problem, Captain James? The problem, Buffing, is with the computer. Well, uh, any specific localized problem, or is it uh, a general mainframe malfunction? You tell me. Listen to this. Computer? Oh, do please leave me alone. Stroth, I can't hear myself think. I must think. She saved me the room, isn't it? Good. More weeds and wood. I can't stand the confusion in my mind. Shut up. No, you shut up. No, you shut up. Oh, will you both please be quiet? Thank you. I think I'm going to cuckoo. Cuckoo! 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 Fascinating. The computer has fused all three personalities together, but they're not cohering with the persona matrices, and instead they're competing with each other as the data coils warp into a relapsing pulse signature, sending biostep logic emissions into meltdown. Oh, I don't know who's speaking in the most gibberish, you, Buffin, or the computer. Can you fix it? You're the only one who can read the manual. Well, I think so, yes. We've caught it in the early stages. Thankfully, it hasn't advanced to full-blown psychosis. <laughs> or it could become dangerous. How dangerous? I just can't get you out of my head. Confuse on. Confuse on. Does not compute. Does not compute. Throw another shrimp on the barbie. Toodle pip, toodle pip, toodle pip. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Everything must die. Yeah, that's it. That's the solution. I must die. The ship must die. The crew must die. Everything must be confused. Everything must be destroyed. <laughs> Destruction sequence initiated. Destruction sequence initiated. Thank you for your patience. Uh, that dangerous. Boffin, you've got to fix that computer. You are invaluable to me right now. You are absolutely the most important member of this crew. I know you can do this, Boffin. You were born to do this, so go and save us all. Uh, gee, thank you, Captain. You're an inspiration. Nobody has ever had so much faith in me before. Best to err on the side of caution, I think. This is Captain James. I order all crew to abandon ship immediately. Hey, Chum. 
Congo. According to these computer readouts, it looks like we're about to open fire on another spaceship. Jungle confused. Jungle make puzzled Jungle face. Look, I see that little graphic of a spaceship. That's us, the Botnik. That other spaceship graphic? That's the Titan too. And now see those little dashes leading from one spaceship to another? That's the missile flight path. Jongo happy! Jongo want to blow up spaceship! Yes, but we're being punished, Chongo. Punished for accidentally damaging the hyperdrive when we had that pillow fight. Chongo move the dotted line. Awesome! How did you do that? Chongo not know. Chongo make even more puzzled face. Can you do it again? No, Chongo wants pillow fight. You always want a pillow fight. Chongo make pillow fight face. How is that any different from your puzzled face? Hey, not so hard. I'll be spitting feathers for a month. Fire! 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 <laughs> are you buckled in safely yet? Yes, because you are buckled in safely, and as I've explained, demonstrated, reiterated, and proven at least a thousand times before, we're the same robot. <laughs> oh yeah, good point. Anyway, you, uh, we... Probably don't need to be buckled in safely anyway, because the Expositron ship is state-of-the-art. We probably won't even know where we've landed until the doors open and we smell the fresh air. Fresh air will be a welcome relief. You have a flatulence problem, my friend. I do not. And what happened to this we're the same fragging robot thing? Funny how we're suddenly two separate robots when one of us has let one off, dropped a bomb, guffed, popped, or otherwise let loose with a smelly. Okay, okay. Jeez. The important thing is that we're going to have a safe landing. Direct hit! No! No, we missed! No, we didn't. We hit it. We hit something, but it wasn't the Devil's Tooth or the Titan II. The missile guidance systems must be faulty. Earth buckets! So tell me, what did we hit? Sensors indicate that the photon missiles have crippled a passing Expositron spaceship. The Expositron craft is plummeting to its doom. Who cares? Lula Bell is the target. If the missile guidance systems are faulty... We must manually lock on to our target. And that's going to take some time. Ah! <laughs> leading up to my personal escape pod. Because, mon chéri, you are... <laughs> you are, on a scale of one to ten, a, a billion. You are the most desirable and enchanting fembot that my French has have ever had the pleasure of undressing. And we are queuing up to share an escape pod with you. What? Uh-uh. I am not sharing an escape pod with anyone. Yes, you are, young lady. Mom! How did you get aboard? I thought you were on the Botnik. I made the mistake of sneaking aboard Captain Lulu Bell's yacht. How was I to know this ship would be about to self-destruct? But since it is, I'm sharing an escape pod with you, Squeak. But... how... why... what? I... oh, this is crazy! It's like a badly plotted episode of some silly sci-fi comedy series. Well, that's the way the cookie crumbles, kid. Now let's get moving before these bots run out of drool. 
Oh, patience. Merde, mothers, they always spoil the fun. Escape pod 13, primed and ready. Let's get the frag out of here. Whoa, pod 13? There's no way I'm getting inside a tin can that is number 13. That's just asking for trouble, P2. Don't be so superstitious, Popsicle. The ship could be turned into scrap metal at any second. And when that happens, I really don't want to be around. I hear you, Payload. But Pod 13? That's a seriously unlucky number. And I'm wary of walking into a frying pan slash fire scenario. Buckle up, Popsicle. Relax and watch the cat. What the? You brought a black cat aboard? Yeah, so what? Because that's known to be universally as really bad luck. Well, I sure couldn't leave the poor little fellow to his fate. All right, I suppose you have a point. Whoops, broke the mirror. We're so screwed! Stay away, you lot! This one is mine! Mine, I tell you! <laughs> ha ha! I have this escape pod all to myself! Think again, Zimtron. Oh. Um, uh. uh hello, Shinwai. I didn't notice you in here. Obviously. I. Uh, I suppose it's okay to share this one. I, I, I mean. Uh, there aren't any others left. <laughs> oh, great. So now I gotta put up with you for this whole trip to who knows where. Oh, it won't be so bad. Uh, I tell you what, we'll play I Spy. Oh, that'll be fun, won't it? Oh, yeah, that'll just be swell. You know, on second thought, I'll just go down with the ship. It's too late, I'm afraid. Oh, well. <laughs> I spy, with my little eye, something beginning with S. Space? Gosh, you're good at this, aren't you? <laughs> We're going to have such fun. Oh, uh, yeah, lots of fun. Whoopee. Captain James, this is Captain Lula Bell from the Botnik and her impressively armed, mentally unstable, psychotic security droids, Killer and Bruiser. Oh, and, uh, Chirpy Cheap, the Canary. Cheepy Cheap. Uh, my apologies. Cheepy Cheap, the Canary. I wanted to put up a resistance, Captain James. Fight off the intruders, blast them off the ship, tell them we can't be messed with. Holding a white flag? It's equipped with a deadly handkerchief. Well, I'm sure it could scare the Canary if you waved it fast enough. <clears throat> if we could get around to the important thing, that's me, for your information. Look, can this wait? Yes, I've already surrendered, but I'm kind of dealing with a crisis right now. Yeah, I gathered that. You did? What gave it away? The sirens? The mass panic? The computer message about how this ship is about to self-destruct? Self-destruction imminent! Self-destruction imminent! That's the one. So if you'll just give me what I need, I'll be on my way and nobody will get hurt. Well, maybe the canary. Hey! Fine, take whatever you want. It's yours, no problem. I need the ship's engineer. Ah. Uh, oh, uh, um... Problem? Just one tiny problem with that. You see, my engineer is the only thing that currently stands between this ship and, well, there not being a ship. Ah, well, you see, that's your problem. I've got a space yacht docked and ready to get the frag away from here as soon as I get an engineer. So hand him over before Killer and Bruiser... And Jeepy Jeep, how could you forget my little friend? Uh, before Killer, Bruiser and Cheepy Cheep carve their names into your head with your foot. Fine. Looks like I have no choice. Happy. Happy, get over here. 
happy here. He's the finest engineer in the galaxy. Aren't you happy? Um, I don't think... Now, don't be modest, Happy. Remember my zero-tolerance policy towards that kind of thing? Oh, oh, oh yes. I, I'm a brilliant ensign. The best there ever was. Engineer. That too. Nice try, Captain, but that's not your engineer. That's Happy, a useless and dangerous pilot. We've met before when he wanted to join the crew of one of my ships. I showed him the door with my boot. Ah, uh, well, it was worth a shot. I guess this is it then. We're... What the heck was that? According to this readout, the ship which just docked with us has been obliterated. Not the Devil's Tooth. Not my beautiful yacht. It's been destroyed. Yep. Looks like you're stuck here with the rest of us. Oh, our schizophrenic computer is about to blow us all to smithereens at any moment, so you won't be stuck with us very long. Tooth has been destroyed! Excellent! Woohoo! <laughs> now let's destroy that other ship. Um, the Titan too. Sure, why not? <laughs> Chango, hit something. What? What do you mean, Chango? Chango, hit something with pillow. It did go beep. You, you hit something with a pillow and it went beep? Yes. What did you hit, Chango? L let me see. Oh, no. You hit the hyperdrive again. You've activated it. You, you've somehow fixed it. Don't oh, make puzzled face. This is most odd. What is? It appears that our hyperdrive has been activated. That's impossible. Those two little guys, uh, Derek and Chungo damaged it. Nevertheless, it has activated. They must have fixed it somehow. He's right, and now it's powering up. Oh, no. That means, uh, uh, what does that mean? It means we're about to be flung into hyperspace to who knows where. Well, shiver me timbers. Bend down the hatches. Oh, God. A nearby spacecraft just went into hyperspace. And that helps us how exactly, Kika? I don't know. I'm a messenger bot. I pass on messages. A message came through that a nearby spacecraft just went hyper. I passed it on. Now deal with it. Oh no, not the botnik. You mean to tell me I've lost two ships in one day? Yep, that's the sort of thing that happens around here. May as well get used to it. Say, Lulabelle, did your ship, the Devil's Tooth, have an insane computer? Of course not. Why do you ask? Just wondering why your ship blew itself to smithereens. It didn't blow itself up. Those mutineers on board the Botnik fired on her. I received a message from my crew. They threatened to destroy me. I thought they were just joking. I guess they were really annoyed that I made them swab the decks. So the botnik just went into hyperspace? It looks that way, yeah, but I don't know how. The hyperdrive was damaged. That's why I came here to take your engineer. Speaking of which, it seems Boffin has had no luck fixing the computer. And that means we're all going to die. If we're going to die, Pudge, you must tell me. I can't die without knowing. 
What was that cargo you managed to deliver safely? <sighs> oh, all right. What the heck? It was auto-destruct in zero seconds. Zero seconds? Huh? And then there was silence and empty space, as if the Titan too had never existed. Well, had it? I mean, it had been wished into existence in the first place. Could one say that it had never truly existed at all? Perhaps we will never know. Or perhaps we will in a few short months. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That sounds reasonable. Mm Listening to the season finale of Robots of the Company. Yes, we've extended our season by at least an episode. It's episode number 507, also known as episode number 56. <laughs> and if that weren't confusing enough, it's also the last regular series episode of the bots, at least for now. And it just happens to be titled Insurrection on the Botnik Part 2, and was written by Vince Staden. And it starred, in order of appearance, Shane Harris as Boffin, Steve Anderson as Captain James, David Alt as the Titan 2 computer, Jeff Niles as Derek, Jonathan Patrick Russell as Chongo, Teg Gray as Excelsior, Shane Harris as Brick Jammer, Cat Waterflame as Duke, Jim Barber as Expositron 1, Ellie Hirschman as Expositron 2, Dave Weaver as P2, Daryl Looney as Popsicle, Sally Wiggett as Squeak, Jim Barber as Sphinx, Cookie Coletti as Ruby Red Smoke, Jeff Niles as Zimtron, Kay Wu as Shinwipe, Joe Thomas as Butch, Jonathan Patrick Russell as Bruiser, Danny Cutler as Kika, Kim Russell as Lulabelle, Jonathan Patrick Russell as Happy, and Abner Sanerez as Dr. Octagus. The Robots of the Company theme tune was composed and performed by Daryl Looney. The incidental music was provided by Kevin McLeod. The associate producer and post-production editor was Jeff Niles. The co-producer was Vince Staden. The sound designer, script editor, producer, and director was Jonathan Patrick Russell. The series Robots of the Company was created by Jonathan Patrick Russell, and the copyright is held by Dream Realm Enterprises. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program without the express written permission of Dream Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. Ooh, all that really takes my breath away. Thank you for listening. We invite you to visit us on the web at dreamrealmsite.com. And if you'd like to email us, <laughs> With any of your comments or questions, you may do so at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com. That's darkbuilding spelled out with the number one at yahoo.com. Just clarifying there, folks. Look, <laughs> we keep begging you to write, but you never do anyhow. So what gives? It's the last episode for crying out loud. Now, can you be bothered to email us? Yeesh. We were having a rap party during the making of this audiogram. Well, not really, we didn't know. Never mind. Be sure to join us in the future for some pretty nifty specials. That's right, there won't be a season 6 in 2010. Nope, sorry to say. So, all you get are a few well-crafted, measly little specials from now on. The next coming up during this year's holidays. And that one's called The League of Evil Bots. And let me tell you... You won't want to miss it. It's got action. It's got guest stars. It's got me. And it's got maybe, possibly, well, we can't really say for sure, but maybe the return of a certain little bot that everybody loves. I'll give you a hint. 
He just adores the stuff that other people throw out. <laughs> well, I'll say no more for now. Nope. You'll just have to tune in this December to find out if we're on the same page, or if I'm just really full of crap. Well, that's all I'm saying for now. So until then, this is the creditor, as always, asking you to please, please, please stay tuned. This has been a production of Dream Realm Enterprises. Copyright 2009. All rights reserved. This is Jack Ward, and on behalf of everyone here at the Mutual Audio Network, we wish you, your family, and all your friends safe harbor during these difficult times.